to transform us, for guiding us yet to transfigure us. Abba Father, we are grateful to you. We say thank you. We say
Hallelujah! For God's mercies are new every morning. It is testimony time. Please jam your hands together as we welcome this testifier for, their, for our testimony. Mercy, Umwafia. Mercy, Umwafia. Please listen to this written testimony as she comes forward. I want to thank God for bringing my brother back home safely. He left home for about a week. Everyone was worried. I met the chaplain and explained things to him. He told me to put my mind at rest that he would come home, but it does seem as if it was not going to happen. I met him two days later and told him he is still not back. He tried calling him, but to no avail. He then asked me if I believe we can call him home. I answered yes. I told him his name and he started calling him home in prayers. He asked how many hours should we give him. And I told him, as is a long period, that 30 minutes is enough. I called him in the evening and I was told he was back home. Prior to the same time, I said he should come back. The testifier is Queen Adego Kefet. I just want to thank God for spiritual growth. Ever since I got in, my spiritual life has boosted greatly. I have come to say, thank you, Jesus. Queen Favor is the testifier. Thank God for the salvation of my life and my family and for protection preservation and protection since the semester began. To you alone be all the glory, Queen Oche Ebube. I want to thank God concerning my father's business. This past week, someone just came and wanted to take over his business, but because God is faithful and did not allow him to lose the business. Thank you, Jesus. Queen Abidoye Oluwakeme, please come forward. Your name, your department, your level. It's my new dawn era. My name is Mercy Mwofia Chizamepere. I'm economics department. I'm here to give God all the glory for what he has done in my life. When prayer and fasting season commenced this year, I'm in hundred level, I was not able to fast. I mean, my conscience was judging me because I do engage in the prayer and fasting season. So I, I want this year to be very good for me. I was asking God, God, please, I want to engage in this prayer and fasting season. But my exams was going on, so I didn't engage. So I proposed in my heart that I'll be praying kingdom advancement prayer one hour daily. So when the prayer and fasting season ended, I started my kingdom project. I do pray one hour in my hostel. I really miss the prayer point. So, and secondly, last Sunday, that was... On Sunday, God engraced me. I was able to go out for outreach at the CAF. I was able to meet 400 level students, four, five of them, and 100 level students, two of them. I'm here to give God all the glory for engracing me with passion. I mean, for making me love Him unconditional. I've come to give God all the praise. Hallelujah! You are the next to be empowered. You're welcome. It's my new dawn era. What a great privilege this morning. We have visiting with us here at Landmark University, our own mother, the Vice President Education and member of the Board of Region of Landmark University, Pastor Mrs. Faith Oedipo. Please rise up on your feet this morning as we welcome our mother for a word of blessing. My new dawn era. Please take your seat and put your wonderful hands together for Jesus. Bigger, louder, bigger, louder, bigger. I'm sure you can do better. Make it bigger, bigger, bigger. It's for Jesus. It's for Jesus. 
Give the Lord a shout. Praise God. It's my joy and privilege to be here this morning. First time at the chapel service for the year 2018. When it's a new dawn era. And I believe that God is set to do something new in each one's life. I therefore greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, believing God that even as we open our hearts to him and to his word, the exploits that you never imagined that God can do in your life and through you, both to staff, students, management, and every one of us present here today, by his word, that new chapter will be open in each one's life today. Yeah. Can I hear you believe in amen? Yeah. Scripture says very clearly, seest thou a man diligent in his business? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before mean men. You and I are men and created to stand before kings and diligence is a platform that we cannot do without. Therefore, as we open our hearts again today, as God brings his word to us on a fresh note, I believe that what you and I require to get to that higher place, God will deliver it into our hands in Jesus' name. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. I leave you therefore with this scripture in Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 33. Proverbs 8, 33. It says, hear instructions. Be wise and don't despise it. Hear instructions. Be wise. Don't despise it. Instructions will be coming to us again by the word of God today. Your word is truly waiting for you. Your generation is waiting for you. The world out there is crying, waiting for your own manifestation. You will not be a disappointment. Yeah. There is greatness seed inside you. Can I hear you say, believe in amen? Yeah. Say, the seed for greatness is within me. Say it again. The seed of greatness. Turn to your neighbor, please. Convince him or her. The seed of greatness is within you. Shout aloud, amen. amen. That seed must not die. That seed must come alive. Amen. That seed must be allowed to grow. Amen. That seed must bring forth fruits amen. and be a blessing to your world. Amen. Each time you walk around this campus, just look around and remind yourself, this is truly what God can do through a man who is obedient to his word and who will allow that seed in him to come alive. There are many, many more people among us here today. Nobody knows you. Nobody knows your name nor your lineage. But as you allow the seed of God in you to grow, your name will soon become like a household name. Yeah. And that in the nearest future. Yeah. I love you all. God bless you. Have a very wonderful year in Jesus' name. Thank you. Put those hearts together for Jesus. If you were blessed by those words, hallelujah. You may please be seated. Again, this service is my pleasure to invite the best choir in the whole of Quora State, the Tabernacle of Sounds. Please come forward for your ministration. Somebody just say something sweet to Jesus.
out some praise. It's my new dawn era. It's my new dawn era. In a moment from now, the word of God will be coming to us via our Father. But we have a privilege right now to pray a prayer of expectation. In Romans chapter 1 verse 11, it says, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts to the end that ye may be established. Another version says to make you strong. I know you have expectations this morning. Would you please rise to your feet with me and make that expectation known because we are not of them that don't know their time of visitation. Would you please lift your voice this morning and say, Lord, this is my expectation. This is my desire. Lord, I have come this morning with an open heart to receive your word from your servant, from my father. Lord, send your word to me this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, by your word, let my own new dawn testimonies be delivered to me again this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, this is what I want to receive. This is the grace I want to be imparted with. This morning, are you praying? This morning, make your desires known. Make your expectations known. Lord, this is my desire. I refuse to return the same way I have come. Lord, send your word to me this morning. My heart is open in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you send your word afresh. The word that will move my destiny forward. Father, please send it. Lord, may I be imparted with spiritual gifts this morning as your servant comes to deliver your word. May I be imparted with spiritual gifts from this morning that I may be strong, that I may be established in the name of Jesus, that I may be strong, that I may be established that my life may enjoy progress. Thank you, Jesus. Would you please wave your hands to Jesus and appreciate him. Say, Father, thank you for your word that is coming to me. I'm grateful. I am thankful. Thank you, most high God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. A bigger amen. amen. Please let's be seated. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. It gladdens my please you may please be seated. It gladdens my heart to most respectively welcome our spiritual father, the set man over our commission, and more importantly. The Chancellor, Landmark University, <laughs> Dr. David Oyedepo. What an awesome privilege to be part of this divine visitation that promises to be inspiring and also refreshing. I hope you are set. I hope you are ready as a faculty, as staff, and more importantly, as kings and queens of this great university because God is going to visit us afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. It is on this note that I call on you to rise and celebrate God even with a big hand of praise as we welcome our Father. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven? 
and give him thanks for his goodness and mercy over your life since the year began. Give him thanks. If you have seen his grace in one way or another, give him thanks. If God has done you well in one area of your life or another, give him thanks. Celebrate him. Until you give him thanks for the last, you are not entitled to the next. Give him thanks. Give him thanks from the depth of your heart for his goodness and his mercy over your life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Lord Jesus, again we say thank you for having begun this new year with us and how far you have led us. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. May everyone here be a full partake of the blessings reserved for this year in the name of Jesus. Only good news. In your direction this year yeah. only good news yeah. from you this year yeah. only good news yeah. to you this year yeah. only good news yeah. for you this year yeah. thank you father in Jesus precious name give the Lord a big hand of praise and please you may be seated We are here primarily this morning to proclaim the blessings of the year upon your life. And it shall answer. Yeah. It shall be your most awesome year till date. Yeah. Everything about life shall continue to answer in your favor. Yeah. It shall be a sickness free year for you. Yeah. A disease free year for you. Yeah. It shall be a year of glory and honor. Yeah. No one here will suffer any shame or reproach. Yeah. Every of your steps shall be forward this year yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The teaching series for this season is understanding how to be led by the Spirit. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 14, 12. Repeated verbatim, Proverbs 16, 25. There's a way we seem right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That's why we need to be led by the Spirit so we don't become victims of Failure, frustration, stagnation, and what have you. Only those who are led by the Spirit of God can manifest our sons of God. Our sonship cannot be manifested except as we are led by the Spirit. Because when you are led by the Spirit of God, it goes before you. He goes with you. He walks with you. He walks through you. And he walks for you. So, when you are led by the Spirit, you enjoy his backing 100%. 
he backs you up into anything he leads you into. And it will always show. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of God's plan for man. He shall receive of mine and he will show it to you. He shall not speak of himself. Whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. So we need a sweet fellowship with the Holy Spirit to continue to enjoy divine guidance. We need to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. We need to build a relationship with the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5 and verse 25, he said, if we, we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. We need to develop a quality work with the Spirit of God. So we can pick whatever God is saying concerning us at any point in time. This is so important. I had a very interesting encounter 1976 after reading the book The Purpose of Pentecost by T.L. Osborne. I saw for the first time that the Holy Ghost is a personality. It's not a thing. No. It's a third person of the Godhead. It's a person. And he speaks. He guides. He directs. He instructs. Sure. I read that book in one sitting. I got up. I was eager to share this with some friends and went to look for them but couldn't find them where they knew they were living. And I said, Holy Spirit, we are anywhere. I don't want to ask anybody in this town. Now lead me to where they are. And for the first time, I was 22 years old, I had go forward. What? He speaks. I got to a teacher junction. I said, Holy Ghost, where do I go from here? Make a left. Oh, sweet. I made a left. Go to the next junction. I said, Holy Ghost, where do I go from here? He said, make a left. I said, hold on. You may need to check your GPS. Uh, this left is not going to where I think they may be. Then he kept quiet. He withdrew. I became empty. Oh, let me go. Then he came back. And I said, when he said, make another left, I just made the left without anybody. I was going towards the end of that street. I said, Holy Spirit, I'm only two buildings away into the forest. Go forward. The last building but one, there was it. I saw a cloth on a dryer. I could identify one, one of them. Without asking anybody, one of them jumped up and shouted, Brother David, how do you know we're here? The Holy Spirit still guides today. He still guides today. Our problem is that we are not walking in the Spirit. Most of us are only in the spirit when we are in church. Outside of church, we are totally on under frequency. <laughs> if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Without such guidance, there will be no landmark university. No. Without such guidance, I'll never be in Lagos because I hated it by all means. Without such guidance, I never found myself in order to do what? But here we were on that ground in the midst of the forest. Holy Spirit, what are you saying? This is the place. My prayer is that um, for all of our Great students, you will learn to walk with God early. Amen. It will beautify your life. It will add color. It will decorate your destiny. Learn to walk with God on time. Remember now the Lord your God in the days of your youth. Before the evil days come when you say, I have no more pleasure in them. Not when you are after you are in four different courts. I'm going to get out. They say, get out, we kill you. And I say, okay, let me die like this. 
the guidance of the Holy Spirit is forever real. Yesterday, the 19th of February, 19, I mean 2018, made it 49 years that I met Jesus. I met Jesus at 15. Most of you are about 15, so you're getting too old. You're getting too old. If you toy with this season of your life, you bite your finger the rest. You better wake up. You better wake up. You better wake up. I've never had one day regret following Jesus. The joy inestimable. The peace. Can't find it anywhere else. It passes all understanding. The strength, the vigor. You can't buy that with money. The protection. I mean, a prime minister of Israel was shot down by a small boy. So you, you don't have security anywhere other than with God. Except the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen are we but in vain. And it's through salvation you abide in the sacred place of the Most High. Please catch this on time. It will give you rest all the days of your life. Catch this on time. Today we're looking at how to be led by the Spirit through divine encounters. How to be led by the Spirit through divine encounters. God still appears to his people today. But the bottom line is still this. The Bible says... I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I had. You can't assess divine agenda except you are spiritual. Only the spiritual can assess divine plan. You can be more churchy than the pastor. It does not provide you and me access to divine plan. Revelation 1.10 I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I had. A great voice as of a trumpet saying I'm Alpha and Omega that's an encounter but I have to be in the spirit to have that encounter Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1 come up either come up come out of that canality come up either and I will show you the, the things which must be hereafter so we need to come up spiritually to enjoy access to divine plan Oh, I've never heard from God because you have never been. You have never been walking in the Spirit. You walk in the Spirit, you hear from Him. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. God is so real. He's closer to you than the clothes you are wearing. All we need is to get on the right frequency. And then we can begin to enjoy full access to his divine plan. Let me say this at this point. I know that I know that I know that I'm in the very center of the center of the plan of God for my life. I know. No guesswork. I know that I know that I know and I know that I know that I'm in the center of the center of God's plan for my life. I'm here on ground today because he said, Go, come. If he said, don't, I will tell the plane to turn back. I want to get to that point in your life where you know that to know that to know. You are not guessing. You are not looking for any green pasture anywhere. The greenest pasture is inside you. The greenest pasture is inside you. But like I said, one has to be spiritual before you can assess divine plan. One has to remain spiritual 
one has to maintain his work in the spirit to hear what God is saying by time. We saw examples of divine encounters in scriptures like in the case of Moses. Our God met him in chapter 3 of um, Exodus. Take your shoes off your feet for the place where thou art is a holy ground. And you saw what that one encounter made of him. He became the greatest of all living. The one that had the custody of the creation of God. Nobody was there. But God confided in Moses the sequence of creation. It cannot be faulted forever. Most of the laws that guide the civilized world today were laws delivered through Moses for mankind. All the laws of hygiene and health are in it. In fact, God was, confessed, was speaking about Moses. There is no man in the class of Moses, one with whom I speak face to face. One divine encounter opened several chapters of greatness to his life. Let's get set for it. It's so real. It's so real. It's so real. One encounter gave birth to this mandate that's impacting on the entire world today. It's so real. It's so real. On the 14th of February, 1983, the Lord delivered to me the publishing mandate. The words are put into your mouth, the same committee to writing. And I'll cause the same unction upon the written word, upon the spoken word, to rest upon the written word, bringing about the same effect. We celebrated that just last week. I got to Indonesia one time and I saw our books in the Indonesia language. And they came to apologize. We are sorry we couldn't get across to you, but we needed this book so bad. So we printed them in our language. I said, carry on. We are spreading the good news around the world. I got some copies sent to me from China, printed and published in Chinese language. Carry on, friends. We are pushing the same thing. One encounter, February 14, 1983. My first two books were released, 85, April 19. And from that time in torrents, we have gone off a billion in a year of sales. Online sales all around the world. I have no one dime in it. It's all for Jesus. I've never received a dime from books in my life. But he hasn't stopped blessing me anyway. One encounter. That is how profitable walking in the spirit can be. I was just reading a magazine, New Wine magazine, when God spoke to me. Psh. Let's be in the spirit. Moses saw the bush burning. I mean, just pass away and go. He said, let me turn and see this same thing. Ah, it's a bush burning and the bush is not consumed. And then from the bush came a voice. And the voice opened up grand chapters to his life. He was walking in the spirit. So he could pick the signal. We saw Gideon. He was going through an harrowing experience of the affliction he was suffering from the Midianites. He was under a tree when the Lord appeared to him. Oh, the mighty man of valor. He said, mighty where is the might? Everybody's in hiding. Where is the might? He said, Come, I'm going to send you down. You will smite the Amalekites as one man. <laughs> and so, the giant in Gideon came alive through one encounter. My prayer is that um, before your stay here, all of our students, before your stay is over, 
you will have definite encounters that will set a great pace for your life. Amen. Walk in the spirit. Be spiritual is a way to it. Walk in the spirit. Be spiritual is a way to it. And then, of course, we saw the story of Paul, the apostle. One encounter on the road to Damascus brought that die-hard artist back to God and turned him to a phenomenon in the gospel. You will have your own encounter. Amen. You will have your own encounter. Amen. You will have your own encounter. Amen. In Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, Paul was writing to Timothy and he said, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. You can also say thou hast known God. <laughs> Praise God. Because in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and the Word was God, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. I write unto you, young men, because you are strong. The word of God abided in you and you have overcome the wicked one. Now, so, so God has a special place for young people in his agenda. Don't miss this season of your life. Don't miss this season of your life. Our own Dr. Namdi Azikwe said, give me my youth back and I will pay any price for it. Before you sell off your youth, the most precious season of your life, think. 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 You can't be youth twice. It's only once. Think. And you can't harass anybody by being a youth. And every elderly person was once a youth. There is no youth gospel. It's the same raw gospel. Same. Same. If you are not spiritual, you will pay for it. If you are spiritual, you will live to enjoy it. The most notorious cultists cannot ask if I want to join them. No. The fire burning around me is too much. He can't ask. Talk about peer pressure. You are a victim because you are not spiritual. No. We also had peer when we were growing up. Why don't they praise us? I knew Jesus at 15. No pressure from any source, peers or dispeers, have ever affected my life. My goal was too set. My eyes were in the skies. I want to walk with Jesus. I want to love Jesus. 1970 at 16, I saw from Lamentation chapter 3, verse 27, that it is good for a young man that he bears his yoke in his youth. So I went and knelt down under one tree and I said, Jesus, every yoke I would need to bear when I'm old, let me bear it now. <laughs> Anything I see from scriptures, I run. I run with it. Let me bear it now. I don't want to be carrying luggage when I'm old. When we went to farm in those days, when you're coming back, old people are carrying some little thing in their hand. Women, we rush at them and help them pick it. You are carrying heavy luggage. Your neck is almost turning. But Leo, nobody will take it from you. So I said, Jesus, let me bear my yoke in my youth so I can live to enjoy my old age. I pray that prayer for me. I was in a conference in 1970 and the theme is God is not slow. God is what? God is not. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. God is not slow. And I said, Jesus, your pace is good enough for me. Anytime you come is good enough for me. You can't mismanage my life. You are never slow. So when our church ministry began and we started with four people, 
and we moved to six people and then to ten people. I was having a nice time because I got in a baptism of God is not slow since I was 16. I enjoy his pace. I never attempt to outpace him. His rate is good for me because he looks at my future to determine the happiness in my present. Now from 4 to 6 to 20 to 50 to 100 to 500 to 1000 to 2 to 10 to 15 to 30 to 40,000 to 50,000 then to 100,000 then to 200,000 then to 300,000 and God is not slow. Why am I saying this? Catch as much as you can catch today. They will become assets in your hand tomorrow. Catch as much as you can catch today. They will become life assets in your hand tomorrow. God's word is the most dependable guide in the journey of life. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Most reliable guide. God appears to us in most cases through his word. He said, and the Lord appeared again unto Samuel at Shiloh, 4 Samuel 3, 20, 21. For the Lord appeared to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. How I many have experienced some raw guidance from the word before? Let me see your hands. The good news is you never miss your steps in your journey. Yeah. The spirit of the Lord and through the word of the Lord we keep guiding every step of your way. Yeah. He that loves last loves best. You'll be listed among them that love last. Yeah. Your laughter will pass your generation. Amen. It will impact on your children's children. Amen. Your walk with God will show in your generations. Amen. So get excited and be spiritual. For spirituality is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. First Timothy 4 8. Profitable unto all things, profitable unto all things. Profitable unto all things. My wife just turned 60 last week or two weeks now. Now, we have never had a scuffle in our home, not once. And I knew that would be before we got married. Because the Lord showed me His plan and purpose for marriage. And I bought fully into it. She bought fully into it. The time to even have school food does not exist. No. Can I be anywhere in the world and I want to be anywhere else except my home? No. I want to be home. Yesterday. <laughs> not today. I want to be back home. Comfortable from the door to the lunch. From the lunch to the room, from the room to workplace, comfortable everywhere. My counselor asked me, he said, David, what do you look forward to in your marriage? I said, hitch free marriage. How do you mean? <laughs> I said, we have not had any scope since this courtship began. He said, no, David, you see, when you're sitting together, when you're far apart, it's difficult to serve one another's stool. But when you're sitting together, it's impossible not to step on one another's stool. I said, sir, me and you are sitting together now. Why am I not stepping on your toes? 
I said two reasons. One, I'm not blind. And two, I'm not wicked. Oh, he said, okay, okay. So we changed discussion. I was too sure of his free marriage from the word of the Lord in response to my questions. He guides our steps into realms of honor, realms of dignity. He guides our steps. Be spiritual is the only way to catch it. Every of God's plan for your life and my life is stored in the book. But the more spiritual we are, the greater access we gain to those things. Some things that have given us our place in destiny just came by raw guidance from the word of God. For instance, today, by the grace of God, we are listed as number one largest single congregation on the planet Earth. Amen. Praise God. Okay. 1984, when the church was crawling, three of my staff and myself, we got into prayer and fasting. I called for them to, let's pray and fast. Why is this church not growing? And the Lord showed me four things on the third day in the most dramatic encounter. We were in prayers. That year, I think I was 30. And the Lord said to me, on that third day, stand up on your feet. And I did. He said, follow me. And I followed him. So I said, did you see him? No. But I was following him. How do you know? I'm following him. Can't be following somebody without knowing. Then we got to a point. He said, now turn back here. And I turned back. Then it's like saying, now what do you see? I saw a layer of thick darkness on the roof of the church. <laughs> and I said, you foul spirit of darkness. There's a light that shines in darkness. Darkness cannot overcome it. Now I command you, get off that roof. And I saw it folded away like a carpet. And he gave me three instructions. To comply with, to see the growth of the church open up. Now, those three things from scriptures. He said, when I came to the world, somebody has to tell somebody, come and see. He said, go tell them in town, come and see. Now, how did he explain that black layer of darkness? He said, that is the blindfolding weapon the devil uses to misinterpret what he, Jesus, was doing in that church. And now the siege was over. Now, go to town and tell them to come. So we did. And I love to obey God raw. So we did come and see flyers. Do the diagram of how to locate the church. And went to town to distribute it. One of our elders, who retired as a general, was a major at that time. He got this flyer at Leventis stores and followed that description to get to that church. They just transferred them from Lagos to Kaduna. Went to and told the wife, I'll find the church. I found where we're going because we were praying God show us the church here to belong to. And so, it's and keep sowing the seed, preaching life applicable word. And as the seed grows, the grass will come for it. And keep the grass green and the sheep will lie down there for it making me to lie down on green pasture. If you see that picture anywhere, they may not reference that I said it. Jesus said it to me raw. So we began to trade those three powerful things. Preparing for every service like preparing for a convention. Amen. Going and going and never to stop. We are still going up to now. Going and going. Come and see Jesus is changing stories here. Come and see Jesus is healing people here. Come and see Jesus is setting free people here. Come and see his wife and I wish him a reproach here. We are still going and going and going since 1984. And so one day, we had 108,000 people added to the church one Sunday. It's not in any record anywhere. 108 people, October 25, 2015. 108,000 people added to previous Sunday service. 
Every leading of the Holy Spirit is the highway to your high places. Just follow. Don't just be led. Follow the leading. Follow the leading. Follow the leading. Follow the leading. Don't just be led. Follow the leading. A great day awaits you. A great future awaits you. No one here will end this journey in the valley. There are many global citizens in this room today. There are people here today who must be listed number one in their field. Just follow his leaders. Follow his leaders. Follow his leaders. The number two area of unusual grace that we have enjoyed is the area of financial fortune. Every devil is envious of the hand of God upon our lives as a commission and my little self as an individual. But it came in, in response to an inquiry. Jesus, what is the secret of kingdom prosperity? Because the church is swallowing in poverty. The church of Christ is swallowing in poverty. We seem to even enjoy it. In our own time, when you ride any car beyond the B2, you have lost your salvation. B2 is a sign of sanctification. Every proper brother must start his life on B2 and try to end it on B2. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Well, I know that can be the will of God because if there anybody ever wish you long life and poverty, would you answer? Won't you react? Say, I wish you long life and poverty. He said, no way. Ah, you are a wicked man. <laughs> and suddenly on the third day, now, can I tell you this? There is no sincere question you will ask the Lord that will last more than three days to get an answer. I've said that too many times. And in my studies of Kennedy again books, I found it later that he had this three-day revelation that any time he settles down to find a way out of any situation, he gets the answer in three days. He gets the answers in what? Then God came down through Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. You shall remember the Lord God for it. It is he that giveth the power to get wealth, that he may establish to you the covenant that is fair to your father as this this day. He said, my son David, my prosperity plan is not a promise, so it does not answer to prayers. My prosperity plan is not a promise, there's no respect for fasting. My prosperity plan is a covenant, until your part is played, I am not committed. Many may not know that he did die, sir. <laughs> it's a covenant, you can't pray your way into it. You can't fast your way into it. God is not mocked, whatever a man sows, that is what he can reap. If you are not a swan, you cannot be a reaper. Except you are a thief. You can't be a reaper until you are first a sower. No. And then God began to speak to me, how reliable, when I asked him, how reliable is this covenant? Except you can bring my covenant of the day and of the night. Jeremiah 33, and beginning from verse 18, 20. If you cannot break my covenant of the of, and of the night, you cannot break my covenant with my people. Is any time you see the sun shining, know my covenant is enforced. You see the moon in the sky, know that my covenant is enforced. It's amazing. That was the end of the siege of poverty mentality. You, you have to be free from that mentality before you can explain the reality of it. The people on our part of the world have a highly developed mentality of poverty. And you see, what can we do? I mean, it's the economic environment. I mean, it's obvious. In everybody knows. You know, what can you do? Believe me, nobody can build a house except it's this. The economic situation is so harsh. <laughs> now, this mentality has been cultivated over a long time. So it takes the liberating power of the word of God to be free from it. To say you are not poor. That was it. We've never made 
any request from any nation for any financial aid in 37 years. Never borrowed from any bank or any man living or dead. Why? Poverty mentality was destroyed by the light from heaven that's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The good news is this. Your generation will never be mistaken for beggars. Yeah. It is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and has no sorrow to it. It is your generation that will walk in the reality of God is no respect to a person, but in every nation, everyone that fears him and works uprightly is accepted with him. Your generation will prove that much more than we are saying now because every one of you will, you will exceed wherever I stop. Yeah. And I'm going to see that happening while I'm alive. Yeah. All you need to do is follow the steps of the giant and you'll be named the next. <laughs> the price is the same. No shortcut. No, there is no software. Obedience is either raw or it's fake. Whatever God tells you to do, do it. You don't do it, you pay for it. Now, let me stop at this point. Um, I saw many years ago, C.S. Dow, a man that is diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me, man. And the Lord said to me, nothing defines where you find yourself tomorrow than your diligence in your business today. Your connection does not define your placement in destiny, but your diligence. Your diligence. That couple with lessons from my grandmother, of blessed memory, who taught me that the dignity of life is in the labor of the hand. Is that so? That where I find myself tomorrow is not determined by connections? By who you know, who you don't know? So I can say like Paul, I know no man after the flesh. I've had quite a lot of opportunities today to meet with presidents. They come to my house. Amen. Praise God. I want to sit with them, some of them to say to their scuffles with the opposition leaders. Somebody said, but who introduced to them? Nobody. How did you know them? They introduced themselves. <laughs> you no, know, because I don't need anything from them. See, as thou a man that is diligent in his business. Young people have not been on leave. You may pity me for 37 years. And I don't suffer breakdown. I'm healthier than health. <laughs> Amen. There is no religion about this. It's all about your passion for your assignment. No free lunch in life. Wake up. You don't want to die in the valley? Then put your best into your assignment beginning from now. Your best to your studies beginning from now. Your best to your work when you start working beginning from now. Your best into your business when God gives you one. Put in your best. Nothing but your best. Secures your glorious destiny in Christ. Nothing. Jesus said, I must walk. I've come to impart the word, but until he said, have a baptism, to baptize it, how am I straightened until it be accomplished? Without a stretch, this time in you cannot emerge. I'm not talking about stress. I'm talking about a stretch. Going beyond the normal call of duty. There is nothing extraordinary on his own. It is man's extraordinary input that makes it so. There is nothing extraordinary on his own. It's man's extraordinary input that makes it so. And there is nothing mystical about excellence. It is your tireless commitment to improvement. So, wake up. Wake up. And define the future you are looking forward to. Don't wish it. Define it and take steps towards realizing it. 
I made this statement several the last year that anybody can tell what the future holds in stock for him by what he does with what God says to do today. If you do what God says to do today, you have secured your future the way you want it. Thank you, Jesus. That is what our God leads us by his word into the fullness of his plan. I see many stars here. Your star won't go down to the grave with you. It will set the pace for the world around you. Your own adventure shall be a generational one. He said, David served his generation. He served his generation. There are some who served their family. There are some who served themselves. There are some who served their community. There are others who served their generation. That is the impact of their work with God is in their generation. You'll be listed among them. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Amen. Everything you gather today is an asset waiting to manifest in your life tomorrow. God always speaks to our future. He speaks to our eternity. Let's take his word serious. Let's walk in the spirit. Let's enjoy unimpeded access to his plan for our lives day and night. And it will be sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. Wishing you the best of experience in your walk with God. Wishing you the best of experience. There are students here today that God will, by your hand, build institutions of this magnitude. God, by your hand, will build institutions beyond the magnitude of this one. As you maintain a quality work with God. Let me conclude finally. I am not under any stress. No. Never had a sleepless night. No. The blessings of God, it make it rich and added no sorrow to it. Today we're about 25,000 in our workforce in Nigeria and they draw their pay every month. Not from me, from the one who gave them the job. Praise God. And so I'm alive and well. I'm a kicking. That's how God's blessings speaks. He does not put pressure on your life. He doesn't put weight on your head. Yet, the world around you is amazed. How do you carry all this? You're not carrying anything. It's a blessing. You don't carry a blessing. You just enjoy a blessing. You won't miss your blessing. Lift up your right hand where you are and ask God for grace. Not just to live in the spirit, but to walk in the spirit. Ask God for grace to remain spiritual. And if you are not yet, to be spiritual. Grace to be spiritual. Spirituality is our greatest asset in the kingdom. It's profitable unto all things. Having the promise which now is and the one which is to come. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Very quickly, if you are here in this chapel service today and you are not born again yet, I'd like to pray with you. New birth is not an ideology, it's an experience. If any man be in Christ, a new creature, all things are born, all things are passed away, all things have become new. Wherever you are, you want to surrender your life to Christ and begin a new life and be free from all satanic pressures from all forms of peer pressures and fulfill your destiny in grand styles and give your parents joy and hope and not create a heartache for them and be a source of eternal joy to everyone around you. And much more importantly, you live your overcomer's life and you spend eternity with Christ in heaven. If you are here, you want me to pray for you this morning, pray with you this morning. 
to be saved, stand to your feet. And God bless as you do, wherever you are, get up on your feet. I'll pray with you now. Amen. Everyone that wants to surrender his or her life to Christ, who want to join him, please join. Stand up to your feet and I'll pray with you. You have your life to live. You don't have a spear. Don't mess up the only one you have. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. I'll pray with you right now and you shall be born again. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Many more standing up. Get up on your feet. Jesus loves you. Get up on your feet. Now, there are also people that need to rededicate their life to Christ. You want to rededicate your life to Christ today. No more partial connection. You want to have a full-scale connection with Christ and enjoy the dignity of redemption. I'm going to enjoy the blessings of new life. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand. God bless you. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, wherever you are, stand to your feet. I'd like to, to pray with you in a moment. We are closing the service right now. Amen. All of us who are standing both in the first and second call, please make your way to the front. In case you didn't stand up at that time, you are still free to stand. Stand and join us now. Stand and join us now. It's the last time you are going to stand like this. Jesus will say to you finally today. 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 Somebody is joining us wherever you are. Join us quickly right now. Join us quickly right now before we pray. It's your time for change. It's your time for change. It's your time for change. Thank you, Jesus. You want to join us, you are still free. Wherever you are, join us quickly. Join us quickly. This is your chance for a change of story. Join us quickly. Now, everybody in front, would you bow your heads, please? And lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer of faith along with me. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I might be justified. Right now. I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray over you. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them up. Let the same grace preserve them. All the days of your life, you'll be telling the story of today. Nothing will draw you back from following Christ. And I decree grace to live the overcomer's life. You will overcome sin. You overcome temptations. You overcome barriers on your path. You will enjoy your glorious destiny in Christ. And I cover every one of you today with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered till the day of his appearing. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Where are you going to? Please follow this way for a moment. And then they will take care of you there. Shall we all rise? I know my sheep and they know my voice. Every child of God is a sheep of his flock. So... By the art of redemption, we have access to his voice. But I was in the spirit, and I heard, as it were, a voice. I heard, as it were, a voice. I was in the spirit, and I heard. Lift up your two hands. Now, grace 
to be that man, that woman, that boy, that girl. Who will keep walking in the spirit so as to hear the voice of guidance? I pray for that grace upon everyone's life. Yeah. Not all that glitters is gold. There's a way that she may write unto a man, the end thereof are the ways of death. If I were locked up in America today, I may never taste the grace that I see forever. I might be struggling there forever because that's not where I belong. You never miss your step in life. Yeah. You never get trapped in another man's place. Yeah. I so hated Lagos as a person and that was where destiny was waiting. And I heard him say, arise, get down to Lagos, raise me a people. You know, where did you hear that? In the bedroom. In the bedroom. If we live in the spirit, let's walk in the spirit. And so we got to Lagos and then grace came down. Now, Otta, for what? No, but this is the place. And we got to Otta before the world knew that this ministry exists. I'm praying today that the guidance of the Holy Spirit will reposition you forever. We reposition you forever. Amen. A president of one of the American universities came into covenant with his team. And he said, now, Chancellor, tell me, how did you get to do in three years? What took us 30 years to do? I said, I didn't do it. God did it. Wherever God positions you, that's where your star is. Now, I pray you won't miss forever where your star is. Amen. Parents who are here, allow your sons and daughters to live their life. Not in the wrong. Teach them how to be led by the Spirit. Give them book story. And trust them in the hand of God. And watch what wonders will become of them. Don't force your will on them. You are simply their caretakers. You had a plan before you brought them forth from the womb. I pray that no one here will be a stumbling block on the path of his children. No one will be a stumbling block on the path of their siblings. I pray that each one will operate in the center of the center of the will of God for his or her life in Jesus' name. And so shall it be. When the Lord is your shepherd, you don't want the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He make me to lie down on green pastures. So our green pasture is in his leading. It's in his leading. Not in a nation. Not in a continent. No. It's in his leading. And he tested on when he led him. He caused the rock to bring forth water for them. He cleaved the rocks also and the waters gushed out when he led them. When he led them through the desert, nothing working. But as long as he was the one leading, everything was working for them. Isaiah 48 and verse 21. I now pray in the name of Jesus, you won't miss the rock that carries your water. No one here misses the rock that carries his water. No one here misses the rock that carries his water. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Now I therefore decree this ground a great pasture for all. The unimaginable will happen by your hands this year. The unthinkable will take place in your hand this year. Every challenge student in Israel studies, I decree your freedom now. Amen. I pray over any challenge parents of our students, wherever they may be, I decree victory in their battles. Amen. None of these students will receive 
bad news from home there shall be no emergency call for you and there shall be no emergency call from you for all our management faculty staff everyone that's helping to see god's plan come to at landmark university be blessed of the lord Amen. your household is declared blessed Amen. the works of your hand is declared blessed Amen. you are going places Amen. you are enjoying unusual speed this year Amen. unusual favor this year Amen. in the name of jesus christ Amen. and so shall it be Landmark University is going places. Yeah. Anything God does is marvelous. Who is behind this? Who is behind Landmark University? Who is the fan of Landmark University? He said, This is the Lord's doing marvelous in our eyes. Now, beginning from now, only marvelous things will be happening here. among students, faculty and staff only marvelous things will be happening here Amen. and so shall it be Amen. now lift up your two hands let's again give God thanks everybody give him thanks give him glory, give him praise the year is opened up in your favor everything is speaking in your favor now give him thanks give him praise celebrate him Continue to appreciate God for the blessings we have received this morning. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Father, we thank you. We are grateful. Father, we give you all the glory. You have done us well by your word. Wave your hands and appreciate him. Give him thanks. Let him know you are grateful. Appreciate him. Jehovah, we praise you. We are thankful we return all the glory to you thank you thank you for the delivery of our testimonies I appreciate him wave your hands some more give him thanks give him praise give him all the glory I appreciate him adore him thank you most high god we are grateful lord in jesus precious name we have given thanks amen surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall do in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. It's my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen nor ears heard shall become the order of day in my life this year. Congratulations. Amen. Please, students are pleased to remain seated for further instruction.